Hello and welcome back to our course GP optimization of advanced encryption standard. So last time we we have seen how we can implement advanced encryption standard using the C programming language. So now we are going to see how we can implement it on CUDA and optimize it. So let's start. Recall that this was our algorithm, advanced encryption standard, and this is just one round of it. So uh, A is to actually optimize the round function because we will be repeating it like 10 times or 12 or 14 times depending on our key size. So regardless of our key size, all of the optimization techniques we mentioned will be the same. But of course, if you apply more rounds, it will take more time, so it will be slower. So currently we are focusing on 128 bit version, but again, everything we say actually applies to all uh, different key sizes of AES. So let's focus on the CUDA optimization. Since we are aiming to run this algorithm on a GPU, and the main difference from a GPU and the CPU is that we have a lot more uh, cores in a GPU, we should focus on how we are going to use this cores. For instance, AES has 128-bit block size, so we have 128-bit uh, input. So we can keep every bit in a thread. So you can use 128 threads so that each thread can uh, you know, focus on a single bit and do operations on them. So this is one way of uh, parallelization, but actually this is not a good idea because each thread has to communicate with each other to perform these operations and it will slow down the process. And actually we have thousands of cores nowadays, so if we only use 128 threads, we have to use other cores for something else. So this approach is not a good idea. So instead of uh, par providing parallelization for the algorithm, we should focus on the mode of operation. This is why we actually have seen the counter mode of operation. So instead of uh, optimizing the algorithm for different threads, we can uh, implement our code so that each thread performs a encryption for a different block. Since each thread doesn't have to communicate in this case, this will provide us a full parallelized ability. So our focus on now is that we have a large plain text, we divide it into blocks, so each thread performs at least one uh, encryption on a block. So if we go back to our picture, so this was again our one round of AES. So there are actually three common techniques to implement this algorithm or any block cipher on GPUs. First one can be called the reference implementation or the naive implementation where you actually implement every step as seen on this picture. So you impl implement key XOR, you impl implement SBox operations and perform it 16 times for every byte in the picture. Then you rotate the uh, rows and then you perform matrix multiplication on the columns. So this is one approach. But this will take a lot of uh, time because this contains a lot of operations. So. Another technique is the table-based implementation, and this will be our focus for GPUs. So in the table-based implementation, this is uh, introduced for AES, but also for many different block ciphers. So ID is as this. So for instance, let's focus on this byte, okay, after the key XOR, okay. This byte actually goes for an SBox operation. After the uh, rotation, this byte stays the same. Then this byte, actually this column, is multiplied with this matrix and it is written back there. So this byte uh, will be multiplied with the four elements in the matrix and the results will be written here. And But I mean the result will be XOR to these parts. So instead of doing all of these operations independently, this byte in the top row can take 256 different val values because it's an 8-bit value. So I can actually pre-compute everything for this byte. For instance, assume initially it is all zero, you apply the SBox operation, you perform row rotation, stays the same, then you perform the matrix multiplication, so this value is multiplied with these four values and the results will be uh, actually written here 
as a 32 bit value. So then actually this byte will also go to S box, then will be rotated one byte to the left. So it will be here. And this will also will be multiplied by the matrix and will be exhorted the previous 32 bit value we obtain also for this and this. So actually, instead of doing all of these operations, we can pre-compute these results for, so for a byte on the top row or the first row, second or third row, I can create four tables. So this way I can pre-compute them. And instead of doing this matrix multiplication and so on, every time I can simply look at the table values and XOR the results. So our, we will explain this method in a minute, but we, we will be keeping these tables in the shared memory because each thread will be uh, trying to read these values. And this will cause some bank conflicts, which we will explain later. So, we, but also we will remove these bank conflicts to obtain the fastest implementation. Another approach is the bit sliced method. So here, uh, it will actually, here you are actually slicing the bits. That means that the input is 128 bit. So instead of keeping it in like four 32 bit uh, unsigned integers, simply keep each bit as a uh, unsigned integer, right? So perform operations at the bit level. But in the first beginning of this video, I mentioned that, you know, Performing operations on the bits with, with each thread might be sl uh, slower, but here you're keeping each bit in the same thread and perform operations on them. And when you do an operation, instead of performing operations on these bits, you can actually take, uh, instead of focusing on a single block, for instance, take 32 blocks like in the counter mode and uh, keep these blocks as 128 32 bit values. So whenever you perform an operation, actually you do it 32 times in parallel this way. So this way you obtain single instruction, multiple data level of parallelism at the thread level. So this is another approach, but as I mentioned now, I said that let's keep 128 registers in a single thread, but this already means a lot of registers and uh, increasing the register count actually reduces the number of threads you can call for a kernel block, etc. So the bottleneck here is the available register count. If the block size were smaller, you can op get a better optimization, etc. So we will focus on table-based implementation, but in the literature, there are also some bit slice implementation. So far, our table-based implementations are superior to them, but maybe in the future, somebody can come up with a better optimization with the bit slice technique. So it is still an open problem to see you know, which optimization is the best. So, okay, let's focus on our table-based implementation. So as written here, let each GPU thread encrypt different counter and send the result uh, to RAM. The, the, by result, I mean the end of the encryption part. And you can actually do this XOR operation at the CPU side, at the memory. Not GPU, global memory, but RAM of the computer. So this way, in this mode of operation, you don't need to copy the plain text to GPU and, you know, obtain this cipher text and copy it back. So you get rid of memory copy operations by using this mode of operation because each thread will use its thread number as the counter to the encryption and send the result to the CPU. So this is the good thing. So Let's recall that we are doing the table-based implementation. So let's focus on, for instance, the top row. My aim is to perform the S-box operation for every possible input value of this byte, do the rotation, then do the matrix multiplication and obtain 32-bit value that will affect the result. So this actually means that I need to create a table T0 for the top row byte values. And the, those values will actually go to S-box, then the matrix multiplication, recall that these are hexadecimal values and these are actually Galois uh, field operations. But then the result will be, you know, for a single byte value, the result will be the column. So for instance, here, this if you C0 refers to the first column, the leftmost byte is shifted 24 bits to the right so that you end up with the 
correct byte value, you know, send this to this table, obtain this 32-bit value. So this actually means that this byte ends up with 32-bit value. But it will be exhorted to the table result of this byte. So it is T1. So this time you, you know, rotate it this many bits and, you know, obtain it. So long story short, one column value, this is the resulting column. So if let's say that this is C0 and this is T0. So obtaining T0 turns into, you know, four table lookups and XORing them. But in the next round, we will start with the key XOR, right? Round key XOR. And if you put it there, here, that here, you also add the add round key, this one at the end here. So this way, calculating one column value in a round turns into this, and the second, third, and fourth columns also this. So this is actually the one round of AES. So no matrix multiplication, no shift rows, no SPAX operations. We actually done it beforehand, pre-computed everything in these tables and written it into T0, T1, T2, and T3. So uh, you can calculate it yourself, but we already did it, done it. And so you can also find it on the web. So these tables turn into values like this. So this is table zero for, this is the, you know, uh, for the top row, this is table one, table two, and table three. Great. So one round turns into something simple as this. And instead of storing these tables in the global memory, we keep them at the shared memory, right? Because it is super fast. I mean, uh, we would prefer to store them as registers, but you know, these are a single table requires one kilobyte of memory. So this is why we use shared memory. So every, almost every implementation in the literature that's optimizes AES for GPUs, actually uses this approach. But here there is a problem that nobody solved before. Different threads in a warp accessing the same data lane to access shared memory actually cause a bank conflict. So what does this mean? So GPU threads are grouped into warps of 32 threads and there are 32 data lines or lanes for the shared memory. So assume that we have a table as we did, T0, and this table actually is an array which keeps 32-bit values. And actually these uh, shared memory data lines are also 32-bit values. So when you start writing array values starting from 0, 1, 2, 3 actually stored in different data lanes, but 32 value is also at the 0 data lane. Similarly, 64, 96, etc. So this means that two different threads in a warp try to access T00 and T096, for example, they have to use the same data lane. But two threads using the same data lane line turns into serial requests. This is called bank conflict. One has to wait for the other to obtain the result. So there are two solutions to overcome this. Either every thread request this uses the same data lane, but here we are, since we are performing encryption on different data, we don't know which thread is going to request which data. So this is why it is kind of randomized. This We don't know which thread actually going to access which data lane. So, but if we could do that, if every thread requests that this uses the same data lane for the same value, uh, this is broadcast, so there are no bank conflicts, or we should organize the table so that every thread uses a different data lane. So one solution to this, which I found, is to keep 32 copies of each table so that each thread has its own data lane and read the value from its own data lane so that no bank conflicts occur. But if I create 32 copies of a single table, recall that a single table required one kilobyte, so now I require 32 kilobytes. And we have four different tables. This ends up with 128 kilobytes, but current GPUs don't have this amount of shared memory. So if in the future somebody come up with a new CUDA device with this much shared memory that we can program ourselves, then actually our implementation will be faster. Okay. So my solution is to this, only keep the 32 copies of table zero and don't keep table one, table two, and table three 
but obtain those values from table 0 because the other tables are just the byte rotations of table 0. Why is this the case? So let's go back to this table creation. You call that the these 2s and 3s are coming from the matrix of AES. So as you can see, uh, everything is actually shifted uh, just by one byte. So we can also see it as the result. So let's look at the first value in table 0. It is C6, 63, 63, A5. So let's look at table 1. It is A5, C6, 63, 63. So it's just one byte rotation. So if I keep table 1, sorry, if I keep on the table 0, I can obtain table 1 by rotating table 0, only one byte. If I rotate it two bytes, I obtain table 2, like this, and table 3, like this. So this is our uh, direction. So instead of keeping the uh, table 0 on a single array of 256, we create two-dimensional array. So we keep 32 copies of this uh, array. So each warp has its own data limit. So these are the four loops where you create these tables so that you read it from the global memory, but uh, do it for 32 times so that you could copy 32 times. So we only keep T0, not T1, T2, and T3. Here T4 is actually just the S-box and the uh, rotation operation because recall that in the last round, we don't have matrix multiplication. So this is just for the final round. So we also have a we keep them in the shared memory. Also, round keys, uh, sorry, yes, yeah, so the round keys can be stored in the shared memory. Since every thread will be requesting the same value, this will be broadcast and there will be no bank conflicts. So this is how we solve the bank conflict problem. So at the implementation side, this is how one round of AES looks like. So we introduce something called warp thread index. So thread IDX is ended with 31. So this ends up with a value between 0 to 32. So each warp now, it's a, sorry, each thread in a warp has its own data lane because in this two-dimensional array, they use their own lane due to their warp thread index. So this is just a, a one way of uh, removing SBAX, uh, sorry, shared memory band conflicts. As you can see, I'm only using T0S instead of T1 and T2 and so on. But I have to shift T0 8 bits so that I can turn it into T1. So this is a very actually nice technique to get rid of all of the shared memory bank conflicts. And this actually provided the best optimization of AES on GPU. So in our next and final lecture, we will see how fast this, these implementations are and how good they are compared to the previous implementations. So in the next lecture, we will see the encryption performance of AES on GPUs. So thank you for listening. So, but also one final thing is that we will show the performance on many different GPUs with many different architectures to see that our optimization is not valid only for a specific uh, implementation or specific architecture, but it is valid for every implementation. Thank you for listening.